Madam President, I am offering today a resolution to amend the United States Constitution. I do not do this lightly, nor have I ever done something like this before. The U.S. Constitution is an extraordinary document which has served our country well for over 200 years, and in my view, it should not be amended often. But in light of the disastrous Supreme Court's 5-4 to four decision in the Citizens United case, I see no alternative but a constitutional amendment. I should add that a similar resolution has been offered in the House by Congressman Ted Deutsch of Florida. This constitutional amendment is supported by such grassroots organizations as Public Citizens, People for the American Way, and the Center for Media and Democracy. Madam President, let me go on record as strongly as I can, and as clearly as I can, in stating that I strongly disagree with the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision. In my view, a corporation is not a person. In my view, a corporation does not have First Amendment rights to spend as much money as it wants without disclosure on a political campaign. In my view, corporations should not be able to go into their treasuries, spend millions and millions of dollars on a campaign in order to buy elections. I do not believe that is what American democracy is supposed to be about. I do not believe that that is what the bravest of the brave from our country fighting for democracy fought and died to preserve. Madam President, almost two years ago, <clears throat> in its now infamous Citizens United decision, the United States Supreme Court upended over a century of precedent, taking a somewhat narrow legal question and using it as an opportunity to radically change our political landscape, unleashing a tsunami of corporate spending on campaign ads that has just begun. Make no mistake, the Citizens United ruling has radically changed the nature of our democracy, further tilting the balance of the power toward the rich and the powerful at a time when already the wealthiest people in this country have never had it so good. In my view, history will record that the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision is one of the worst decisions ever made by a Supreme Court in the history of our country. While there is no way of knowing for sure, since there are no disclosure requirements in place to track what was spent. It is no secret that already in the 2010 midterm elections, corporations and some very, very wealthy individuals spent a huge and unprecedented amount of money to further their political goals. And there is no question that this is just the beginning of their efforts. At a time when corporations have over $2 trillion in cash in their bank accounts and are making record-breaking profits, the American people should be concerned when the Supreme Court says that these corporations have a constitutionally protected right to spend, spend, spend shareholders' money to dominate an election as if they were real, live persons. There will be no end to the impact that corporate interests can have on our campaigns and our democracy if we do not end the Citizens United decision and its impact on our nation. All of us in the Senate share one common 
characteristic. We all run for elections. We all live in the real political world. And let me just speak for a moment what I think many of my colleagues in their heart of hearts know to be true. And that is that while the campaign finance system we had before Citizens United was, in my view, a disaster, there is no question that a disastrous situation where candidates, members of the Senate, spend huge amounts of time having to raise money. And I know that is distasteful, not just for Democrats. It is distasteful for Republicans. It is distasteful for an independent. That's what we do. And now, as a result of Citizens United, that bad situation has become much worse because infinitely more money is going to come into the political process through non-disclosed donations suddenly appearing on TV screens in our states. According to an October 10, 2011 article in Politico, quote, the billionaire industrialist brothers David and Charles Koch plan to steer more than 200 million, potentially much more, to conservative groups ahead of Election Day 2012. What do we think? Do we think that American democracy is about a couple of wealthy billionaires putting hundreds of millions of dollars into campaigns without disclosure? Is that really the democracy that Americans fought and died for in war after war? I think not. And it clearly is not just Republican operatives. There will be Democrats doing the same. So more and more money comes into the system. We don't know where it comes from. And in order to defend ourselves, candidates are going to have to raise more and more money, become more and more dependent on big money interest. Does anybody really believe that that is what American democracy is supposed to be about? And let's talk about the practical impacts. What happens here on the floor of the Senate? Madam President, the six largest banks on Wall Street have assets equal to over 65 percent of our GDP, over nine trillion dollars, six banks. Now, when an issue comes up that impacts Wall Street, some of us, for example, think it might be a good idea to break up these huge banks and members walk up to the desk up there and they have to decide, am I going to vote for this? Am I going to vote against it? with full knowledge that if they vote against the interest of Wall Street, that two weeks later there may be ads coming down into their state attacking them. Every member of the Senate, every member of the House, in their back of their minds will be thinking, gee, if I cast a vote this way, if I take on some big money interest, am I going to be punished for that? Will a huge amount of money be unleashed in my state. Everybody here understands that that's true. It's not just taking on Wall Street. Maybe it's taking on the drug companies. Maybe it's taking on the private insurance companies. Maybe it's taking on the military industrial complex. But whatever powerful and wealthy special interest you are prepared to take on on behalf of the interests of the middle class and working families of this country, when you walk up to that desk and you cast that vote, you know in the back of your mind that you may be unleashing a tsunami of money coming into your state. And you're going to think twice about how you cast that vote. Madam President, I am a proud sponsor of a number of bills that would respond to Citizens United and begin to get a handle on the problem. And I'd like to acknowledge them very briefly. One is the Disclose Act, sponsored by Senator Schumer which would force corporations spending money on campaign ads to disclose their identity, just as candidates have to do. That is a good thing I support it. Another is the Fair Elections Now Act, sponsored by Senator Durbin, which would move us finally to publicly financed elections. I think that is a very good idea. I support that. Third piece of legislation is a recent resolution for a campaign finance constitutional amendment introduced by Senator Tom Udall, 
of New Mexico that would make it clear that Congress and the states have the authority to write laws to regulate campaign spending across the country and make sure our state and federal elections are about what's right for our democracy. And I support Senator Udall's resolution. But even these excellent pieces of legislation are not enough. Madam President, the Constitution of this country has served us well for more than 200 years. But when the Supreme Court says that for purposes of the First Amendment, corporations are people, that writing checks from the company's bank account is constitutionally protected speech, and that even attempts by the federal government and states to impose reasonable restrictions on campaign ads are unconstitutional, when that occurs, our democracy is in grave danger. Something more needs to be done, something more fundamental and indisputable, something that cannot be turned on its head by a 5-4 Supreme Court decision. We have got to send a constitutional amendment to the states that says, simply and straightforwardly, what everyone except five members of the United States Supreme Court seem to understand, and that is corporations are not people. Bank of America is not a person. ExxonMobil is not a person. Madam President, the resolution I am offering today calls for an amendment to be sent to the states that would do just that. It would make perfectly clear, one, corporations are not persons with equal constitutional rights as real life, flesh and blood human beings. Two, corporations are subject to regulation by the people. Three, corporations may not make campaign contributions, which has been the law of the land for the last century. And four, Congress and states have the power to regulate campaign finance, as Senator Udall's amendment would also say. Madam President, this amendment is co-sponsored by Senator Begich of Alaska, and I would urge all of my colleagues to co-sponsor this amendment, which in fact does what its title suggests, saves American democracy. Thank you very much, Madam President.